Hello. It's crazy me. I'm here. I'm going to wait a few minutes because I'm sure I'm early. And then we'll get started with Tulip Ladyfingers. Hello, Melissa. I think I'm going to wait a couple minutes to see if I get a few more people to jump on with me, so... It's a beautiful sunny day. They might want to watch this tomorrow instead of today because cooped up tomorrow is really cooped up. If that makes any sense. I'm here. I'm smiling. <gasps> oh, it says two people are watching. says four yeah being inside this weekend is the perfect weekend to so escaping the stupid rain well good morning young man are you glad you're home and not out on the road mr. Beckham Oh, you can see Heather's quilt. Binding is going on it after I finish the live. Woohoo! Okay, I don't like dead air. So. This is the live video, which you get to vote on whether you like the live or if you would rather it be um, videoed and then put on as a video. So this is the block, block two of Cooped Up. It is called Tulip Ladyfingers. You will need three fabrics. You'll need your scissors, your rotary cutter, your block lock ruler that I love. In fact, there's a two and a half inch one that I am going to use. Beautiful block lock. Thread, pins if you use them, iron if you, well, if you use them, duh, you need an iron. And I love best press, so that's what I'll be using. Okay? The three fabrics need to be cut into four, fabric one, four, four and a half inch blocks, four, two and a half inch blocks, and four, three inch blocks. Fabric two is one, four and a half inch block, and fabric three is four, two and a half inch blocks, and four, three inch blocks. Now, I have one finished using the three fabrics, but because it's me and most teachers who teach classes don't like me because I never follow the pattern exactly. This one I'm going to demonstrate today is actually using two fabrics because I found a really cool fabric in my stash that I don't know where it came from, but it intrigued me. So I'm going to use it. So I'm only going to be using two fabrics in what I'm showing you. But this is the the one that was finished. Ooh, sorry, try to come back a little bit further. There we go. So you can see, we use, or I used a blue for the background like I did in the first one, um, a pink for my tulips, and then a green center, kind of like the seeds of a tulip plant. Tulip, I don't know. I'm just trying here. Okay. For the one I'm going to do today, 
I'm actually still using a blue this blue I have no idea where I got it I have no idea where who make it nothing I just found it in my stash and I thought this would be really really cool and then I found this beautiful yellow in my stash and when I seen these two together I thought whoo life is gonna be fun today so I am actually creating a tulip that is like you're taking a picture from beneath it so you're looking up at the sky so the center block is going to be this blue also because I just had this crazy thought that went through my head this morning when I was getting ready of course I have all other stuff cut already but I decided I wanted to do this today so that's what I did so the first thing you do is you take your three inch blocks and you put them face to face and you can draw the line like I showed in the other video if you want to refresh your course just pull up that other video um, if you I always just press this so I have a valley like so and then I run my quarter inch foot down this valley so it's a quarter inch from each side then I press this so I set my seams and then well, which this didn't think real through I need to go ahead I'll finger press them today but I'm gonna go ahead and cut straight down this line this little valley in here and hopefully everything will be just jolly so hang on one second because I forgot to bring over my rotary cutter so I'm going to go down on the mat here somehow let's see well this worked earlier why is it not working now okay so we'll cut up here so what I do curler with the slip knot technology and I have a spinning mat that I'm using for a demonstration and I just put the ruler I use the 45 degree angle as the points and then the quarter inch let's try this so I've got the 45 degree angle line on from point to point and if you can see that I gotta try and get this to focus better this is a quarter inch line and I put that on one of my stitch lines so now when I cut down this little valley here I'm going to cut it exactly in half and have a quarter inch seam on both sides so now I'm going to try that sorry if I'm making anybody dizzy here this is the first time we're doing this live so this should be interesting if you guys got questions just ask all while we're doing this hey Rose Rose how are you uh, Millie's behind me hi Laura nice to see you and I love scraps so I am doing definitely doing a scrappy quilt so because I didn't bring my iron over here I am now just finger pressing oh, I don't know how this is gonna Come on. Da, da, da. Are you getting dizzy? <laughs> well, I'm just going to finger press them open and always to the dark because that just seems to be the logical way to do it. You can always manipulate your seams when you're putting them together if you need to. All right. And then I'm taking my block lock ruler with the seam in there this part will lock right on your seam and then you just cut all the way around this and I should show you this too right now it's on there the right way and it doesn't move if I put this on the wrong way you're gonna see you're not gonna get a two and a half inch square 
So black oak rulers are really cool that way because if you put them on the right way, you'll have the right size square when it's done. But you just have to make sure that you have it the right direction. So hang on here. I'm going to try. I wonder if I put this. We'll work the kinks out by the time we do this again. With this, with our cooped upness here. There we go. Maybe that'll work. Um, with our cooped up live that we have, I can't get my, my buddy, my friend, my old pal, Melissa here because of, of the, the quarantine that we have to stay home, which I hope everybody is doing. And again, I have a rotary mat or rotating mat, rotary map. Um, so I'm just turning it to cut off all of the pieces and if God willing and the crick didn't rise I have a perfect two and a half inch half square triangle yay let me do the other one real quick and then we'll start sewing all of our pieces together so if you're watching this video when it's not live, you'll have time to cut everything up that you need and you'll be able to sew it together. If you would like in the future for me to post what you need beforehand, I can do that too because we do have another, um, this is block two, so we have ten more blocks to go through and I am going to try and do at least one a week. Um, we might be doing two this week just because it's going to be such a crappy rainy day this weekend that I think, hi Nancy, um, I think that I'll do another one on Sunday. That'll keep us with a little more work to do. Oh, look, there's my hairy arms again. We called me a Wookiee, but woo! anyway, so now I have two more, two more half square triangles. And the black lock ruler, I should have showed you guys before. We know this is a rotary, rotating mat, so you know this part comes off. And I still have two of these in stock at, oh my god, I forgot how much they were. Melissa, help. I think they were 40, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, but anyway, this is that slip knot technology. I put it on here. Okay, it is not going anywhere. I don't care where I push on it or what I do. These rulers with the slip knot on the back are fantastic. I wouldn't trade mine for any other ruler out there. And I can order them for you. I have some coming um, in about two weeks. They're still making them. They're made in the USA, so they're not even they're not made with out of the country stuff. So, don't have to worry about something coming from China with something on it. They're made here. The actual rulers are manufactured in Arizona. And then they get shipped back to Colorado where they put the, the Slipknot technology and all of the other lovely stuff on it. So, it is a U.S. company making stuff in the U.S. All right. So, I'm going to move the camera one more time. And we are going to put my block together and that way I can show you guys anybody have any questions if you do just holler I'm trying to make these as easy as possible all right so there's there we go there's the sewing machine I love my Janome here is my um, leader um, I use these when I'm doing small pieces, especially when there's a seam right on the corner because otherwise the machines have a tendency to swallow them up inside there. Um, I'm also an anti-pinner. Eh, sorry, folks. That's who I am. Um, so you won't see a lot of pins. I like the flexibility of being able to move stuff around. And I am missing some blocks. What did I do with them? 
technical difficulties. Please stand by. All right, well, we're going to start with, oh, they're on the table. Okay, we're going to start with these half square triangles and our two and a half inch pieces. And if you look on my previous one, you're going to see we do a half square triangle with the two and a half inch piece and a half square triangle with a two and a half inch piece so that we can make this block. Okay, so because we want these petals to go in the right directions, Uh, Melissa's asking me why is it such a big deal to get good rulers. The better your cuts are, the better your ma your seams are going to match up, the better your quilt's going to be, and the more square it's going to be. There is nothing like a good ruler to have that doesn't slip on you to make everything so much nicer than it normally would be. Okay, so now I want to make sure that my colors of my tulips are facing each other. So when I do these, I want to make sure I set them up the right way, okay? So that means that I need to put it like this and like this and like this. Let's see if I can I need to figure out how to make it. Oh, there we go. All right, and then like this. That way these two pieces of the two, oh, and then I screwed it up. Do you see that? Woohoo! And that's why we do this ahead of time. You want to make sure your two petals are facing each other and that your background fabric is out and your petals are your right base of your flower is in. Okay, so then all we're going to do, and I just should have sewed a few of these together, but you know what? Life's too short. So. Anybody have any other questions while I sew these? Oops, I lost my leader. There you are. I'm going to put this back up this way. And I put my leader, and I have my quarter inch foot on. And I put my leader on first. And I put my needle in it. Then, and now I think I've messed this up. There we go. Then I can put this in here and I can just sew right off my leader and right onto my fabric and it doesn't eat my fabric. As we all have had happen to us a million freaking times. So that is the first half. And now I'll do the second half. And you can chain these so that it goes really, really fast also. Um, I should have had these all done except for one. Isn't that nice of me to waste your time? But you can all tell me what your stories are of being cooped up. Does anybody duct tape their husbands to the wall or in the closet? I probably will be doing that this weekend as he won't be able. Hi, Sue. So nice to see you. Um, as I as he won't be able to do his maple sap collecting because it's in the rain, you know, and as he tells me, sugar melts when it rains, so he can't possibly go out. So I don't know how everybody else is doing. I'm looking forward to the farm fields getting going, so maybe I won't smell as much turkey poop. Um, when I do this, you can pin to match your seams here, as you can see I'm doing, but I don't pin because I like the flexibility. If I need to move a seam from this side to this side for, you know, to be able to move it like this, I like that flexibility. And then I can also pull or push things to make those seams nest really nicely, which is what I'm setting up here. Bingo. Now, as you can see, I need to go press, but there is that block all sewed together nice and neatly so the seams all match pretty. What do you guys think? 
Are we doing good here? <laughs> Melissa's making a lot of masks for the nurses and for the healthcare people. So you just need to do this three more times. I'm going to do one more just so I can show you how the three rows go together. So bear with me a second here as I get my pieces back up and working. Let me get this background and then get my, come on, get my tulip together. There we go. Nancy, have you got flowers planted and started? I don't know if you're still with me. The boring part with me sewing. I'm so sorry. But we're almost done with that, and then I can show you how the three rows go together. All right. Hopefully I've done this correctly. Ooh, and look, I'm going to try and do it. Oh, it did a good job. I do, I do advocate for the um, reader because I get so mad when my machine eats my fabric on those seams and it's very frustrating because then you've got a big ball that you're dealing with and you're mad and you want to pick it out and then you want to throw the project across the room because you're mad and frustrated now. We don't need any of that happening. So if you use a leader, just a piece of scrap that you can sew on and put your needle into first. And here's a good example. I want to move this seam that way and then this one this way so that they line up better and they nest better. And that is why I don't pin so that I can get it to do that for me. Now, mind you, there are places where I pin. I have to because sometimes you want to get mad, especially if you're putting a border on. Pin that sucker in the middle and then stretch it to the ends and make it fit. So, look, tulip block number two. Okay, so then you're going to take one of your background colors and you're going to sew, once you press this, I don't think I trimmed these blocks the right size. No, I didn't. I trimmed them to five. So joys of being me. So then you're going to put them like that. And let's see if I can get this up here. Busyness, lost in space. See how I didn't trim that to four and a half? Wasn't that intelligent of me? So I'm going to press these and then I am going to sew a second row like this. And then I'm going to have two more tulips here and here. So that when you're looking at it, you're looking at tulips from up above. Kind of like that. Does that make sense? All right. Well, I am not going to make you guys sit through me trimming the blocks that I didn't pay attention to um, in the size. This is, if you follow the three color rule, this is the block, how it looks. Okay, so that the tulips are on the four corners, and I'm just going to have one solid blue that goes across here, but I'm still doing it in three pieces, just because I can and because I don't like to do anything normal. So, does anybody have any questions? Any? Woo! Let's get it up here so you can see me. Hi, it's me again. If anybody has any questions, this is the time to do it. If you like this live with the video, the blocks. I am going to try live one more time on Sunday with the next block, block three. And then we can vote. We can vote on whether which way you like it better. I, like I said, I like it. I actually like it live because you get to see that I am not perfect, um, which I have never claimed to be. You right now it's very quiet in the shop because well we're on lockdown, um, 
There is a little dog in here, as we all know. Millie's here. She lives with me. I think she's attached to my leg these days. Um, but I like these blocks, and I think this is going to be a really cool-looking quilt. Um, the first block is still on there, and it is also at my YouTube page. But you can text me, email me, message me. I'm so easy to, to get a hold of. Please try. If I don't answer, it's because, well, I'm probably sleeping. Um, or I'm with the customer, but wait a minute, this time, no, not the way our, not with lockdown. So, but I'll be here. I will post a picture of my new one and my old one on the Facebook so that you guys can see the combination of the two. And then I will see you Sunday. And I think I'm going to try for... Maybe like 11 o'clock on Sunday instead of our normal 1 o'clock. And see. So pass it around to everybody that I'm here. I'll answer any questions you want. I am still long-arming. It's a ding, drop, and run process. Because um, I am not open to the public to come in. But I will pick up stuff off the front porch from you. And I will drop things off for you at the front porch and we can wave to each other through the window. So, But I'm here. Give me a holler. Send me a message. Have a good time. And don't forget, I have Tula Pink coming in June, so this better be over so you guys get to see and buy this beautiful fabric. All right? Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Oh, yeah. Share by share to my page.